guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a makeup do's and don'ts video. This is the don't side and this is the do side, hopefully you can tell. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try and help you get to more to this side as opposed to this one. We've got overlining going on, we've got pure texture everywhere, contours too low, there's loads going on. So hopefully I'll be able to teach you something. And I'm not saying I've not done any of these errors before, I definitely have. So um, hopefully you will enjoy it and take something from it. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let's get into the video. So I'm going to do, let's see, this side as the do's side of the face. So I'm going to be using the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation in the shade 190. I have a damp beauty blender here. So what I've done is just run it under the tap, squeezed out the excess water and then dried it with a towel. And it's just gonna make the foundation blend really nice and evenly. I'm gonna use one of these little plastic things to put the foundation on. And just taking it on my blender, I'm going to put it on one side. It's really weird doing one side of the face actually. I've never done this, I don't think. I'm actually nervous as well, just to see if you can see a lot of the mistakes on camera because a lot of it won't show up I don't think but at least you'll know the tips to take on board. I'm also missing out the eyelid here and just under the eye because we're going to put concealer there and I don't want it to be too much coverage because then you'll end up with creasing which I'll show you on the next side. And for the other side of foundation I'm going to use the Smashbox Studio Skin Full Coverage 24 Hour Foundation. This is because a lot of people just go for any full coverage, they think I need complete full coverage for my face to look good and often it looks cakey and dry and just doesn't look great and if you're oily it's just going to come off in a big patchy mess. So just a lesson, you might not need full coverage sometimes medium to full is enough but this is full and what i'm going to use is a brush so i'm going to just put it straight onto the skin like an instagram influencer and we're going to try and blend it with this brush please excuse my squeaky chair it is so annoying i bought a new one and i wish i had my old one back so as you can see right here I'm gonna put it all over my eyes this time. Lots of people just throw it on with a brush like this and all it's gonna do is turn out liney. It's all in the hairline here as well. Then going in with concealer. Now I've got some Tarte Shape Tape. This is good concealer. And on the good side, I'm gonna just take a tiny little bit and just put it where I need it. Like this. I'm gonna blend this in. really really lightly don't press too hard or otherwise you'll need more concealer and that is covered on this side we're gonna go influencer way too much people actually think they need this much concealer it's beyond me and we're gonna put this on the actual eyelid this time just to double up that coverage to make it extra creasy and you can see it's not even covered it up I still have a dark circle there. When you put a cast over the whole thing, it just changes the colour of it all, really, rather than covering it all up. On to brows. I'm just going to be using a Kat Von D Super Brow Pomade in the shade Blonde. Got an angled brush here. I'm just going to go into it very, very lightly, making sure to wipe the excess off on the side because we want to make it look like we have real strokes of hair in the brow as, if, as opposed to just blocking it all on. So I'm just going to carve out the shape. very lightly just paint some brush strokes as if it was a hair then on the other side i'm not going to take the excess off we are just going to pile this on people are desperate to have bigger brows but they end up just making them look so dark way too dark for their hair color and then they block this part off here like this so as you can see here, it kind of fades into real hair. I'm gonna go too far down here too. You don't need to go that far down. It's gonna pull your face down. And there we have a nice blocky brow. I'm literally just dragging the color as, if, as opposed to just making little brush hairs. Lovely. 
Next we have blush. On the good side, tap off the excess, and we're gonna go up here. So nowhere around the apple of the cheek, like they usually say. We don't want this part, because it's gonna make your face look round. And we want to pull the face up, so just lightly. You can see how I'm just swooping it up in an angle. And then on this side, not tapping any excess off, we're going right in the apple of the cheek as if you were a clown. Also going quite low, like this. Now on this eye, I currently don't have anything on it. I'm gonna put an eye primer on a beauty blender, just a tiny bit. You don't want it to crease. And this is gonna prep the eyeshadow so nicely so that it will just blend into this primer. All of the colors will transition nicely and we don't have any excess coverage from the concealer or the foundation. And then we'll maybe go underneath just a tiny bit at the bottom there. You can see the difference already. Let's do some contour. So I'm gonna use the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette and a MAC brush, which is usually for your nose, but a lot of people use it for contour. So we're gonna go for, let's go for the darkest one because we're gonna go the, the don't side first. So don't tap any excess off. If you can see, you your actual cheekbone is here. The shadow for it is here. And a lot of people are going down again to kind of shadow the shadow, which doesn't make any sense, but they're going literally this low to make it look like you've got like a bigger cheekbone, I guess. And as you can see, I've not tapped the excess off. Looks absolutely awful. You can see how that just looks ridiculous. And then what I'm gonna do on the other side is actually use more of a fluffy brush. We're gonna go in with this first shade here because it suits my, my skin tone a lot better. Tap off that excess. And I'm gonna go actually under the cheekbone. What I'm also gonna do is only come about this much down as opposed to right down here where you dragged it down. I'm just editing this and you can see that the blush is really blocky on the good side as well. Basically, I've tried to overcompensate so that you can see the blush on camera. And when I'm blending, I'm not going just all over the place like this. I'm gonna go up. So I'm gonna blend and drag it up a little bit. I'm also gonna put it on the ear because we want the shadow to look the same everywhere on your face. If you choose to contour, you're choosing to make one shadow on your face look a different colour than the rest of your shadows. So you have to match everything up. So I'm going to shadow just down the ear here, follow it down the jaw, so that when you see your jaw shadow, it matches. And then I like to contour my forehead. If you don't have a big forehead, you don't have to do this step. I like to just come in a little bit because I've got quite a wide one. And then just at the top there, very lightly, tapping off the excess each time. And it will just act as a little shadow and a little illusion. And then I'll just, with whatever's left, I'll just quickly do a bit of the nose, but I don't usually contour my nose, so I'll leave that there. The reason you've got the lighter colours in this contour kit is because of the clean up. So I can clean up this line to make it look even better. So I'm going to use this side of the blender, dip into the yellow and the peachy colour and just carve it out. It looks silly at the moment, but I'm going to blend it. And that is just going to keep everything looking clean up and fresh. Just quickly blend that in. And you can see lifted and light. Oh. That's the only way I can describe that look. I've got such a random order of this today, so sorry about that, but we're gonna just set under the eyes. So with my eyes, I have wrinkles, fine lines, whatever you wanna call them. And whichever translucent powder I use that everybody raves about, it never seems to work on me, it always looks crepey, it looks wrinkly, and I look about 100 years old. So what I've started doing is just using ambient light powder from Hourglass. This is a clean brush, I have just wiped it, kind of wiped the excess off. Get a tiny bit, and I'll let me just show you first. So there's no crease in here because we've used the right amount of coverage. Look at this, and look at this. So we're looking pretty creasy on this side. I'm just gonna literally dust the tiniest amount. On this side, I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier setting powder, and this is what people actually do. I'm gonna get loads of product, and just get all 
all of that powder in there. They call it baking. So they kind of leave that then for 30 minutes and they'll brush it away or after five minutes or however long. And also as the day goes on, it gets worse and worse and worse. So not good. On to eyeshadow. So I'm just gonna use a beige neutral eyeshadow. I'm not gonna tap off the excess. Now we're gonna go really heavy handed into the don't side of the face. Well, what I'm also going to do is bring it quite low on this side because people think they have to go that low and it really drags the face down and then I'm also going to make sure it's quite heavy on the inner part here too like so on the do side I'm going to tap the excess off and I'm holding the brush further away now so that I've got a nice light touch this has also got the eye primer on so it's going to be a lot easier to blend and keep it nice and high at the end. Obviously depending on what eye, sh eye shape you've got. But I like to keep it high just to lift the eye up. And then I'm really concentrating on blending it. It takes a long time to blend the shade. You have to have the patience for it. Then taking this reddish matte and a different stiffer brush. I'm gonna not tap the excess off again. We're just gonna go straight in with that. Tapping off the excess, you get my drift. And I'm gonna go in circular motions to blend everything really smoothly. And also you can tap the color into it as long as it gets blended out afterwards. The difference with both of these eyes is now I'm going to take a clean fluffy brush, cleanish, and I'm going to blend the edges so that it seamlessly blends out. As I'm going along, if I do get too low on this side, I just clean it up with a beauty blender, which has the leftover foundation on there. And that will just bring it back up again. I'm then going to use a flat brush, get some eye primer, and just carve that in a bit out of the eye because I'm going to put shimmer over it and I want it to really pop and then I'm going to go in with Aura which is this shimmer I'm going to take my finger and pat it on the eye primer you can see how bright and shimmery that looks beautiful colour. And then I'm going to take a brush for the shimmer this time. And just put that over the eye. And you can see the difference there. I've also got a lot of fallout here and that's from going in too hard with everything and not tapping off the excess. You will end up with speckles of eyeshadow all under your eye. Now we're on some eyeliner. That's what I'll normally do. I'll normally do something like this. So it's a big, thick part here, and then it goes a lot thinner, and I've flicked upwards up to the eyebrow, up to the tail of the eyebrow right there, which lifts the eye. And then here, I've gone really thick in the inner part as well, and I've gone more straight as opposed to up. So you can see how this kind of lifts this up, and this is more like, mm, down here. People also will not do a tail. They won't do a wing and they'll just stop there, and that's just gonna make your eyes look smaller, which is fair enough if you've got massive eyes and you don't want them to look bigger, but most people do try and make their eyes look bigger with a flick. Then mascara before lashes, so I'm not gonna do any mascara on this side, and you will see the difference when I put the lashes on. So with this side, I'm gonna curl them first. I'm gonna pinch the skin, then go halfway up and pinch that, and then go right to the edges and pinch those as well. That way it's curled in three places. Very thin layer of mascara. We're not aiming for long lashes. We just want to coat it so there's no dustiness from the eyeshadow. And so that our lashes look black, the same color as the falsies. Usually um, I would say, make sure you trim your lashes down. These were already trimmed, so I don't need to do that. But if you don't trim them and it's too big for your eye, if it goes past the actual eyelid, then they're too big and it's just gonna cause you problems later on in the day. They're gonna come off. It's also gonna drag your face down a little bit. And the trend at the moment is the cat eye look. So it's all about bringing the face upwards. So you're gonna make sure all of the old eyelashes
lash glue is off the lashes. Make it easier for yourself. These are some old lashes. The band is nearly snapping. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on and then when you get to the edges, just do a tiny bit more on the edges so that it doesn't peel off. If you can see my blonde eyelashes under here, as opposed to this one where they look much more together. I've actually pinched them together, my real lashes and the fake lashes, just to blend them in with each other. And here you can see there's a definite line. And to enhance that and make sure it looks even better, I will just take some coal liner and draw underneath here. And then I'm gonna take some mascara, which is especially for bottom lashes, really. They've created this really tiny wand from MAC so that you can do your bottom lashes with ease. And what's also important once you put the lashes on is to go over the eyeliner, make sure that everything's seamless. And if any shimmers dropped on the eyelashes to just kind of colour them in with the liner. What I then like to do is take my Beauty Blender, I use this for everything, it's so handy. I'm just going to put this under the brow just to clean up where the eyeshadow was getting too close to the brow. Just be careful you don't mess up your work. And I like to put it on the inner part here just to brighten up a little bit. And then if you need to just make sure it's all blended still and you've got a much brighter look going on there. Ah, the bottom lid, I forgot about that. So I'm going to use that red again using a flat brush. I'm just going to put it on the outer corner and then blend it out. So it's not harsh. I'm just pinching that eyeshadow brush. And it's blended out there. Then I'm going to dip in. You know the drill. We don't tap off, tap off the excess. I'm going to go all the way to the inner corner as well. Which just looks ridiculous in my eyes. You see how it's just closed the eye up completely. What people will often do as well is put eyeliner on the bottom lid. I've got no mascara on the bottom there. It ain't looking good, hun. Highlight. So we're gonna go with a quite a, a big brush for a highlighting brush, I would say. And we're gonna go in with this one here. Get loads, don't tap the excess off. And people like to put it on the top of the blush, which is quite low down here, and be really heavy with it. So what you get is all of this texture here, and then they come up here too close to the nose, and then go right up here, they do. So it's just a big swoop. I am being dramatic for the camera, just putting a bit of extra on, but that's what it ends up looking like. They'll also put it on the head here, try and give it a nice glow but it again ends up looking really textury and they'll put it under the eye here which used to be a trend but it's not so much anymore and it just looks a bit drag queeny. I'm going for a much smaller brush now this is a Jaclyn Hill one usually I wasn't wouldn't use a shape like this because it's very harsh but this one's special it kind of distributes it really nice and evenly so I'm just going to take a tiniest bit Tap it off, and you just go in right on top of the cheekbone, but not too high. You don't want to go right up close to the eye, just in that little part here. And then with the excess, I'm going to go under here just a little bit. Again, there's barely anything on my brush, so it's not doing much. And then if I want to do above the eyebrow, I will do the outer part here. I will also do the inner part of the nose there. Cupid's bow is always a good one, but then go in and diffuse it, blend it all in, and then get your blush brush with nothing on it and go under the highlights just to make sure it all blends in seamlessly. I know I keep saying that over and over again, but it's true. I know I'm very croaky by the way, I've had a really bad cough. I actually went for a COVID test and it was negative today, so that's good, lips. So on the do side, I'm gonna do the outer parts here and here, exactly how my lip is. And we're gonna overline the top and the bottom slightly. Then get a liquid lip. Like 
like this. I'll always put a nude with a colourful eye like this so that it doesn't overshadow it and it doesn't look too much. So let's do a red one with this, something I wouldn't do. So I'm gonna really overline the whole thing. And I'm gonna use a Jeffree Star Poinsettia liquid lip, which is shimmery, just for added effect. And this is how we are looking. So this is the don't side, heavy, heavy texture everywhere, heavy contour, extremely overlined lips. I realize this is very over-exaggerated, but I was so scared of it not showing up on camera. And this is the do side. Things are blended in, everything's kept angled and lifted and a nice nude lip to finish things off. Oh my God, I hope you can see all of that on camera because in real life, let me tell you, things are crumbling. Oh, it looks awful. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you got some tips from it. And it'd be great if you could subscribe to my channel. That'd be amazing. Give us a like and a comment down below. Let me know if you've done any of these don'ts before in your life because I certainly have. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.